really starts in Detroit, in Megatron. Calvin Johnson put on a show in week one, remember that? He had uh, 164 yards, two touchdowns over the Giants. In his eighth NFL season, four-time Pro Bowler already has 68 receiving touchdowns, 10,000 yards receiving over his career. He also holds the NFL single season receiving record, say that fast, with nearly 2,000 yards in 2012. Nate Burleson hanging out here. Again, we appreciate it, analyst. Thank you. You play with him, so we, we obviously want some firsthand knowledge. In your opinion, how good is Megatron? The best? I think just by asking the question, um, you got to phrase it differently. It's not how good is he, it's how great is he. Oh. For my peers, my time I played in the NFL, he's the GOOT, G-O-O-O, G-O-O-T. He's the greatest of our time, mm -hmm. and that's my time. Now, I understand there's some legends that have came before him. There's mm -hmm. Jerry Rice, there's Michael Irvin. We've talked about this. Yep. In my opinion, if Calvin Johnson has longevity by his side, and he wants to play that long, no doubt in my mind he will go down as the best receiver ever to play this game. And she just read off some stats, and people can Google stats, so I'll, I'll let you do that at home. Okay. But what I'm going to tell you about is what I've seen firsthand. And it's going to sound like I'm creating a fictional video game character. <laughs> Power, speed, agility, versatility, the ability to play outside and inside. Can go get the long ball, can run past you, run underneath you. He can run through you. He can break tackles. He can shake tackles. He can high point the ball. And I think probably the biggest attribute that some people know about but haven't seen firsthand, he is one of the most humble I heard. and hungry athletes yeah. mm. I have ever been around. Yeah. I mean, an absolute pleasure to watch. And it was a joy. I walked in as kind of the big brother type and ended up leaving after four years learning more about how to approach your job than anybody I've ever been around as a player. Um, a, a small example of that, I've told this story a couple of times. I remember having a cookout in my house. A whole bunch of football players watching NBA basketball and a lot of fried food and, and knowing that we had a day off, but we had to go in and we're gonna sweat this out. We had a long night, let's sweat this out. We all meet at the same time on a day off. We agreed, let's go sweat this out. Everybody started walking towards the sauna because that's what we do, football players hop in the sauna. Mm -hmm. Calvin Johnson walks out the direction He's headed towards the weight room. I said, hey, Calvin, what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm about to go sweat this out. We said, we're sweating it out. I'm sweat it out. Curious, just to see what he means, I walk in the weight room. He's by himself on the treadmill. And not your traditional treadmill, on the manual treadmill. Mm -hmm. Sweating everything that he put in his body out because that's how good he wants to be. And that's the standard he sets for himself. And I remember at that moment thinking, he's just different. And he doesn't have to be a rah-rah guy. He doesn't speak a lot. He doesn't talk a lot. I mean, I, I barely got him to celebrate when I was there. But one thing I do know is he was blessed with a special stick when he was created. Right. Mm. And he has taken those skills and went from good to great, great to excellent, and is chasing phenomenal. Wow. So he will, in your opinion, go down as the greatest receiver ever when all is said and done? Yes, I, I do believe so. Stephen A., you agree? I don't know if he'll go down as the greatest of all time. I definitely think he'll have a chance. Uh, you got to remember, he's so big time to me. I don't even, I, I actually forget his name is Calvin Johnson. I'm so used <laughs> to calling him Megatron because yeah. I just love that name, number one. Um, and, 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 you know, the only thing I love just as much as that name is his commercials with P. Diddy where he, <laughs> you know, he's Megatron and P. Diddy's Calvin, Calvin Johnson. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love that commercial. I wish they bring him, I, I, I wish they bring it back. But I got to tell you, I think that when we're sitting there and throwing all of these laudables on him, while valid, Nate, and completely undeniable, and you are definitely the expert on this subject, notice how you were sitting on the side for the basketball say, because where you belong. <laughs> but right here, you're the expert. You're here, the expert right here. I will tell you, I will tell you that you're, you're right on the money, and I won't refute anything that you say, but I think you're giving far too much credit to just his abilities, but not his size. This dude is 6'5", about 240. That does play a factor because there are times when I'm looking at Calvin Johnson, even with those long legs and, those si and that size, there's somebody right there with him. He's a great route runner. We understand that. He's got great hands. We understand that. He plays well under pressure. He's got mad skills. We know all of that. But there are plenty of times I see defenders, his, uh, you know, he's not necessarily shaking them off, evading them, blowing past them or anything. They're right there. 
They just don't have the physical prowess to overcome 6'5", 240. When I watch Jerry Rice, when I watch Terrell Owens, when I watch some of these guys, I mean, and I'm certainly not saying he can't be better than these guys. He's not going to be better than these guys. But I go back to the days of the Lynn Swans of the world, the John Starworths of the world, the Mark Clayton, Mark Super Duper, Dan Marino throwing them the football. I'm watching an abundance of the, the, the playmaker, Jerry Rice. You know, the list goes on and on. A Sterling Sharp who was big time. I'm watching so many of these guys. And I remember seeing individuals with their exceptional route running that had a abil an ability to create space. To me, what stands out about Megatron is that half the time he's catching catches, it's, in, it's with no space. He just has the physical ability to overcome suffocation and guys being right on him because they're simply too small. That's entirely different than somebody that has the speed, exceptional route running, et cetera, et cetera, and find a way to make the most out of the little they have. Calvin Johnson has been blessed, not just because of his athletic ability, his work ethic, his humility, all of that stuff is absolutely right, Nate. But the other thing about him is that he's physically gifted, Skip, it's almost like LeBron James. You look at other guys, a Derrick Rose, a Russell Westbrook, you know, they're phenomenal. But LeBron is a freak of nature because he's 6'8", 250, 260. Yep. That's how I view Megatron. Hold okay. on, Skip. Let me just slide in real quick. I need to channel my inner, inner SAS, SAS. Okay. That's my inner Stephen A. Smith. Uh-huh. Um, uh, hold up, uh, Mr. Stephen A. Smith. Can I can I ask you a question? Question, please. Question. If separation is all, yeah, 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 is all yeah, that yeah, you your, can but, talk but about. imitation is not Okay, good. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> but if separation is all that you can pinpoint, how hard is it to get separation when you have a corner underneath and a safety over top majority of the time? Majority. What? There's only a couple cornerbacks in this league that will face him one-on-one -on -one with a single safety. So, yeah, he's not going to get major separation. They got a cornerback playing underneath because he told but the safety. But is that a rhetorical question? No, or it, do you really want an answer? It's, it's, a, it's an honest question because you can, you're saying he's, he's not getting enough separation, but he always has corner safety help, unless you go up against a bold enough no, 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 Patrick no, no. Peterson or somebody like that. One-on-one -on -one coverage, no, I guarantee you'll get five yards on anybody. No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not denying that. I'm simply saying to you that the other greats had that issue too. All I'm trying to say is that Calvin Johnson has 6'5", 240 to rely upon. I'm not taking anything away from him, just like I wouldn't take anything away from the greatness of LeBron James. But there's a difference between a Derrick Rose that has incredible speed and can blow by you with athleticism that's off the charts, a Russell Westbrook, the same thing, when they're legitimately six feet three, six feet four, as opposed to a LeBron who's 6'8", 260. He's a locomotive coming at you. I'm looking at Megatron, Calvin Johnson, and I'm saying to you, when I look at Jerry Rice, the playmaker, Michael Irvin, and others, I see dudes that can do certain things. They had to work under the same conditions, but they didn't have 6'5", 240 to rely upon. So what I see them doing, even though I see Calvin Johnson doing it too, I think it's tougher for them to pull off because they don't have 6'5", 240 to rely upon like Calvin Johnson does. That's all I'm saying. Bayless. I'm not taking anything away I hear from that. I they hear just that. don't have to rely on. Okay, it's time for some perspective here mm. from the, the wise, older member of the Will panel. Will that be you? Here. Yes, thank okay. you very much. <laughs> okay, good. I do like, Mr. Smith, your LeBron analogy, except it really doesn't quite apply even to this man. This man is clearly, by far, the most gifted receiver who has ever come along in the history of this league. Yep. And LeBron, for all of his physical gifts, has never been the smoothest, purest shooter we've ever seen. So he's not the total package. He has worked hard on that and improved it dramatically, but he still occasionally struggles with this, even from the free throw line. Calvin doesn't struggle with anything. Right. There's no physical attribute where you can say, well, he's a little deficient here. He needs to improve this part. There is no improving any part of his game. That's tangible. Now, I'm going to raise an issue here. Mm. The intangibles I still am suspicious of. I'm not sold on Megatron's intangibles. This is why, and our viewers can never get this through many of their heads, 
This is why I always say, if you ask me what receiver in history I want on my team, I want the playmaker. I want Michael Irvin. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I covered him through his years in Dallas. He was the leader of teams that should have won four straight Super Bowls, and they won three out of four and came real close to winning the other one. He was the rocket fuel. He was the man who carried them by making the biggest plays in the biggest moments on third and eight in Philly or New York or Washington. He's the guy in December in the cold that you wanted not only in your locker room, in your huddle, but you wanted him out there on the flank because you could just throw it to 88 and he made Troy Aikman look pretty good. I've said this before, I feel like Michael Irvin helped Troy. He, he Look, I'll go this far. He put Troy in the Hall of Fame. Mm. That's how great he was. Because when it was time, you just throw it at 88. He's going to figure out how to catch the ball. Is he as gifted or was he as gifted as, as this man? No, it's not even close. Right. But I still would take him over this man because I watched him lead on and off the field teams to what should have been four straight Super Bowls. I'm not sure Calvin Johnson has that in him. I'm not sure it's in his nature. You, you went through him in the early years in Detroit. Is he too nice? Is he too humble? Mm. And whatever that dog is in him, it started to come out. And I believe you had something to do with being a little bit of a big brother to him, a little bit of a mentor. Encourage him. Come on, let it fly. Let it, let it flow. And he started to, and now he's starting to play a little angrier, yeah. and it's getting scarier and scarier mm -hmm. for the opposition. But I haven't seen enough. Yeah. I need to see this man, and I know it's just receiver, so you're limited in what you can do. But Michael wasn't limited in what he did for his football team. He took it over. Yeah. He was the man on those Super Bowl teams, and Calvin is going to have to show me he's that guy. There's, there's something to say about leadership, but more importantly, rings. I, I can yeah. agree. As an athlete growing up, being a fan of every sport. I've always looked at, at the winners that won the world championships, just a little bit better and a little bit higher standard, held them on a little bit more of a pedestal to. than I did the ones who didn't win, the Barclays or maybe yeah. the Carl Malones. But as an athlete who played with Calvin, I started to just embrace the moment and realize that okay. I was waking up and I was seeing greatness every day. Sure. And I, and I said the same thing when I played with Randy Moss. I thought, there's no way I can get any better than this. I'm playing second fiddle to Randy Moss. This is awesome. I could retire now. A few years later, I'm lined up next to Calvin, and I thought, this is it. This is the cream of the crop. If you can build or create a man that's supposed to play defensive end, but he runs just as fast as the fastest receiver and jumps just as high as... <laughs> he does it all. He, yeah. he does it all. So I thought okay. to myself, I'm not going to wait for him to win a championship sure. to claim him as great or say that he can be great. Okay. I'm going to give him his greatness now because I'm seeing it. And I'm okay with that. Now, if the rings come along, of course, that oh, would stamp it. And everybody, that, oh, the validation Ooh. would be great. But okay. if they don't, I'm still wanting to say, as a society, we need, need not put so much, I guess, emphasis, emphasis yeah. on winning a championship and just giving the individuals that are showing us greatness right. applause and praise. All right. Uh, we got to go, according to said producer. Nate, you're sticking around. Coming up next, okay. we're going to give